Hey guys, this is Omloy Noir, I'm Michael and you're watching an episode about some of my ideas on how to properly fake a Chopin waltz. All the practice materials, examples, sheets and exercises you're gonna see in the video are available on my Patreon page, plus a little bunch of more additional exercises on the matter. Link is in the description. And now let's dive right in and we're gonna begin with the greatest of the great, the one and only Tartarov. What? Don't tell me you never heard of this guy. Well, I know it sounds like it, but that's not an original Chopin piece. Just in case you haven't seen this spectacular video of a guy improvising a Chopin waltz, you gotta watch it. The name of the guy is Jean-Jacques Hauser, more commonly known as the infamous Tartarov, that on one occasion in 1968 scammed a whole concert hall audience into believing that they were listening to the unpublished 33rd Beethoven sonata, and besides that seemingly was fluent in literally any given music musical idiom as long as it was linked to the keyboard. If you're asking yourself how such a skill can be developed, I can tell you that he probably didn't wake up one day and just pulled it off in this kind of manner, but probably developed and refined this style over a certain amount of time. You can be sure that he had a certain template of specific devices that he drew out of the shelf when the time was right. And in this video I'm trying to give a little glimpse into how such a template could possibly look like, of course from my personal point of view. Let's go! Just like in Baroque improvisation, one starts with cadences, as these are important stylistic signifiers. A 5-1 cadence won't finish every phrase, but definitely a lot of phrases, so I guess it's clever to have a good stock of ending melodies above this progression. Here is a bunch of examples, always in major and minor. I know this move is kind of over the top, but it lies comfortable in edgy keys. G minor though feels like this. A prolonged cadence makes an exchangeable 4 bar segment and would include the cadential 6-4 and a chord approaching that thing. And as there is a whole repertoire of precadential chords, I'm gonna give several examples. So here are some licks on 4 bar cadences. Not every 5-1 progression serves as cadential element, it can as well be used as pendulum, which creates a very typical situation. Here is a Chopin original. A 
I don't know how, but somehow I recorded it in the wrong key. So it's actually in A flat and uh, there is extensive use of this lick in his Opus 42 Waltz. And how fast is this actually? You just want to quit the piano, honestly. And there is a strikingly similar 5-1 pattern in his Opus 34 number 1. Needless to say, 5-1 patterns like this work as well in minor keys. What I just demonstrated is how you can build up a bigger musical phrase by a simple formal strategy that can be described as additive 4-bar modularity, a principle you can find in every Chopin waltz. Here is a rather primitive example that demonstrates how to draw an 8-bar phrase from a 2-bar idea via repetition and transposition. Now I want to refine this idea a little bit. The minor phrase is gonna answer with a new motive as contrasting idea. Afterwards I pick up the same major phrase again and close via 4 bar cadence. And just by doing this I obtain a proper closed 16 bar period that can be inserted at any point. Just as useful as the 5 ones are the 7 ones, as those as well make up very useful and versatile 2 bar modules that can be chained up in a lot of ways. A motivic module could possibly look like this and can be transposed separately. A compound exercise that actually already sounds pretty authentic and idiomatic is to draw an ascending chain of those throughout related keys, which makes a chromatic bass line. Listen to this. <laughs> And here is another one and this time I'll stretch it out into a 16 bar phrase as you would see in an original waltz. The score this time is presented in the form of a partimento. <laughs> Now I'm taking a different motive and combine it to this major minor sequence that's commonly known as Fonte sequence. The first module is related to the local second degree, the second one which lies a whole tone below it is always the major key tonic and this is the key that's usually confirmed afterwards via cadence. Nocturne, where I borrowed this motive from, Chopin's not just doing that Fonte thing, he's as well pushing that motive down the chromatic scale for a bit. Which is kind of a radical move that sounds awesome and like most chromatic styles is pretty much transposition friendly. Let's talk a little bit on themes, as every waltz has at least one catchy main subject that will not just state the first substantial idea, but that as well will reappear several times like a rondo theme throughout the piece. 
I guess at least a bunch of people watching, including myself, have played this waltz in piano lesson. The initial four bars form a classical prototype opener upon the progression 1551 and usually display a melodic approach of two corresponding elements. And you know what? That very idea can actually trace back into the Baroque era and really bloomed in the classical period and I'm very sure you've heard the following examples before. And I guess this one is as well very popular. It's a good exercise to take Chopin's original bassline, which is one of the most common basslines to this chord progression, and check out the melodic sweet spots above it. These intervals I'd memorize and save as contrapuntal guideline. Here's two different examples. A good melody normally doesn't just apply arbitrary chord tones, but follows a certain outer voice scaffolding with preferred sweet spots. In this example the guideline is very obvious, as I try to realize a smooth counterpoint by imperfect consonances that includes as well contrary motion. And now I show how to draw a 16 bar theme from this opener. That's gonna follow a formal shape that is very common in Chopin's music in general. The antecedent itself usually displays a sentence structure that's driven towards a half cadence. The consequent though picks up the initial idea again and then closes with an authentic cadence. As I wanna be precise, I'm gonna put together a concrete example. I'm taking the 4 bar 1551 as initial idea. The fifth bar typically inaugurates a motion towards the half cadence at the end by continuing and increasing the motivic drive and eventually dissolving it into a stream of eighth notes after the peak. The consequent is a little easier to create as it just picks up the opener again and closes via a 4 bar cadential module, in this case a 3-4-5-1 cadence. Let's listen to this. Here's one of my favorite themes from a posthumous original waltz by Chopin that concentrates more on chromatic voice leading but as well as organized as a 16 bar period. Sounds swell. Let's listen now. Occurring pattern in Chopin's music is a voice leading trope that's commonly known as chromatic lamento, that Chopin totally embraced, adopted in his very own way, and picked up several times. The underlying scaffolding can be drawn from the Faubourdon, which basically is a chain of sixth chords that Chopin decorates with seven six suspensions, which was already a common procedure in the Baroque era. For a piece that's located in A flat major, this is kind of a daring entry, as this bass line seems more appropriate to F minor. But Chopin chose to close both 8 bar phrases with cadences confirming A flat. So there is a certain ambiguity in all that, which makes this piece so original. A very good way to practice this progression, in my opinion, is treating it like a chaconne bass to find the melodic sweet spots and to experiment with multiple melodic variants. There is a lot of hints pointing to the idea that Chopin himself was probably working like this as well, and not just in this singular piece. 
there is quite a bunch of pieces that very obviously suggest this kind of process and this pieces come pretty close to what I conceive as Chacon. It's almost like a secret subgenre in Chopin's music where he repeats the same bassline multiple times with different melodic variants. And as well his most famous piece to me seems to reflect this procedure as well. Really, give it another listen with this kind of new framing. Just a little side note, let's get back to business. For my own experimentation I modified this baseline in a way that it would resemble rather more the shown 16 bar period with the antecedent as sentence and focus more on the key of F minor. And from that I created my own stuff. Here is one version that I was really pleased with. I guess that does it for this video. Thanks for watching to the very end. I especially want to thank my patrons for their support. This is a big motivation for me and I appreciate this a lot. As I said at the beginning, all materials you've seen in the video plus a bunch of more exercises are available on my Patreon site. So if you want to get your hands on this, consider to become a patron as well. I know there is a lot of stuff that as well could have been addressed and maybe I'm compiling a second video on the same subject. Alright, see you next time.